entire indie folk genre post-2011 is pretty much indebted to these two albums by Bon Iver. Sure, they had their influences too, from Sufjan Stevens to Bruce Hornsby, but it really brought indie folk music into the public eye in a way that it had never been before. At the end of 2023, I started a series where I break down the production style of different artists by creating a song in their style and showing the entire process of recording, producing, and mixing it. Today. You guessed it, I'm doing Bonnie Iver. But if you're a fan of your music right now, you're probably thinking, which album are you gonna do? Because they're all completely different. And I mean, this is a tough choice because For Emma is obviously iconic and 22 A Million is my favorite album of all time. It, it's, it's on my wall. I, I is cool too, but it had to be their self-titled 2011 album. This is their Grammy winner that every indie folk musician has been inspired by at some point in their career. So I figured that breaking down the production style of this album would be most helpful to producers in this genre. So here's how it's gonna go. I wrote a song in the style of that album, probably most closely inspired by Holocene, Towers, and Wash. Kind of combines the instrumentation of those three tracks. So in this video, you're gonna watch me record and produce this song, and you'll hear the final thing at the end. So first up is recording the guitars, which in this track are directly inspired by Holocene. Here I have a guitar in Bon Iver tuning. This is actually a Nashville strung guitar um, and I've put it in dadgad tuning. So like the highest string is, is here, it's a high, high G and then these two strings are lower, the top two. Nashville tuning is an extremely common guitar string technique, specifically in country music, but also in any kind of folk inspired genre. So to do it, you need a 12 string set, which has a set of six regular guitar strings, plus a set of strings where the bottom four are an octave up. So if you just string your normal guitar with the six high strings from the 12 string set, then you have a Nashville strung guitar. So this is the stringing that Bonnie Iver uses in Holocene. And specifically, if you do finger picking patterns with this stringing, it ends up with really unique sounding results. So we're going to use it here and if you happen to have a second acoustic guitar uh, I recommend doing this. So I'm going to be using these Shure KSM 137s. They're a pair of pencil condensers and I'm going to arrange them in an XY pattern to capture a full stereo recording. Now in order to get that Bonnie Fair sound I'm going to double track basically everything and that includes the guitars but I just like recording them in stereo anyways. This is just my preference but you totally could do two mono recordings and pan them hard left and hard right. It would get pretty much the same result. So let's record this guitar. Okay, so that's probably the acoustic guitar done. I've done three takes there. Um, of the entire thing. Now I need to move this back somehow to where it belongs. Okay, this slots in here. I love cables. We got our guitars in here, so now I'm going to send these to my acoustic guitar sends. So this session is the template that I have for any session that ha prominently features acoustic guitars. So I've just routed these to the acoustic guitar sends. Uh, let's take a listen. <laughs> Yeah, sounding awesome, so it's uh, bumped these up a little bit in volume. Yeah, so now let's get the vocals in. Maybe the most famous thing about Bonnie Iver's style, specifically when it comes to the production and arrangement, is the vocals. So most importantly, there isn't just one lead vocal down the center, but there's two panned a little bit either side. The takes are sung in a really soft falsetto, and then once you add your processing, it almost sounds like the vocal is surrounding you instead of just coming from one spot in the middle of the stereo field. It's not just a vocal, it's part of the soundscape. This is something that Justin Vernon's talked about when it comes to lyric writing. He'll often pick words that sound best or even sometimes invent words that sound cool instead of really focusing on the meaning because in Bonnie Iver's music, the vocals are really just another instrument. And I think I just sort of sit down and, and sing sounds and sing melodies on top of uh, on top of whatever music is going on until they sort of seem like they're some a form, even if the words don't make any sense. And then I just sort of like listen for weeks and months and jot down what they sound like, what those sounds sound like, and then I start to type them up and then I see if they make any sense and what it could mean and how the certain images sort of bend and, and refract into certain things. And 
um, I end up with meaningful songs about things I didn't even know that I needed to be writing about. So I'm going to be using my Townsend Sphere. Uh, currently now it's the Universal Audio Sphere. They got acquired at the start of uh, 2023. Let's just freaking do this. I'll get the metronome on. And obviously I'm filming on my phone right now, so I hope that I remember the words uh, to this song that I wrote. Make it so we we get close to leaving. Make it so we we get close to leaving. Make it so we we get close. So I'm gonna rename these to vocal lead left and right. The lead vocals that we just recorded are gonna be a little more soft left, soft right. Um, so yeah, let's just see. I think I got the lyrics all right in these last two takes. So let's just uh, let's just see how it's going. Make it so we get close to leaving. Okay, timing there. Oh yeah, um, another thing. Um, what key? What key are we in? Get close to leaving. Okay, we are in D. I always use auto tune on my vocals, so we are in D major. I'm gonna set the speed at right around there. I think that should be about good. Now I wanted this track to build as it progresses, so I added some electric guitars inspired by towers. Okay, that might be a really nice sound there. We'll assign these to those two electric guitar tracks that we made. Awesome. So at this point, the track was sounding nice, but it was lacking the sort of cavernous space that most Bonnie Bear tracks have. I still have my electric guitar out at this point, and so I wanted to try adding ambiance using Guitar Rig 7. Just do ambiance there. Just gonna take this way, way down. So that's one of my favorite tricks for just some easy ambiance. Um, Guitar Rig 7 presets, they're, uh, they're really good. All right, we need some piano in here. I'm gonna use good old Post Felt by John Meyer. Awesome VST, however, it does crash my computer a lot, so I'm saving before I make any adjustments to it. Remove some of the body, increase the felt, bring down the room a little bit. Let's just play along a little bit. Cool. I kind of change the balance of that piano a little bit. It's got to be quieter, and low end's got to go. After this, I went to sleep because it was late and I was tired. I got back to it the next day, but unfortunately I was having this problem with CPU when I tried to record live audio from my DAW. I'm working on that, so hopefully this isn't a problem in the future, but it became a big problem as the session started getting bigger. So unfortunately the next part is just kind of a summary of uh, the things that I added. It's so the next day now. I've added some extra layers. Um, here's what it sounds like all together. So yeah, I'm loving where it's at, and I'm just going to show you what I've added. So first of all, there's this really simple bass pad that sounds like this. And I added this really washed out pedal steel guitar underneath uh, with the piano. Super vibey, super ambient. And then the main thing is a whole bunch of drums. So we have a kick. A shaker. If you go to it on the piano roll, it's playing 16th notes, um, and you can see I done with the velocity. I'm emphasizing every downbeat, um, so it's just that shaka 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 shaka. And I'm, I'm just stealing this from Holocene. Literally, it's basically exactly what's going on there in the drums. Then I have this uh, rolling um, hi hat part that comes in. So exactly what the shaker's doing, but it's a hi hat. And then I have intermittently this rolling snare. 
And I added this response part using literally this cardboard box and uh, where is it? This? this cardboard box and my wire brush. So that brush that I recorded kind of plays off of the snare. It's uh, snares in the left, brushes in the right. And the last thing I added uh, is some of my Lucas Fournier violin slides. This is a sample pack I made of sliding between every note to the violin. It has like individual slides of like going from note to note, and it also has has chord changes. Uh, so I added in some of the chord changes here. We all know that strings are probably the most beautiful instruments out there. And adding them to a track is one of, if not the best ways to enhance a song's emotion. If you want strings on a song, but you sometimes feel that traditional string VSTs can fall flat in super intimate, vulnerable settings, the sample pack that I used in this video is available to download on my website, and there's a free and a paid version. I have a whole video here showing you how to layer it with other string VSTs to create the best sounding string arrangements you've ever made in your life. But if that's not enough, for you and you want a song with live strings then get in touch. I'm a producer for indie artists and I also happen to be a violinist and I love adding live strings on the songs that I work on. You can check out the top link in my description to hear some of my work and see if we'd be a good fit to work together. So there's pretty much two more things that I want to do. Uh, I want to record a bunch of actual live strings and I want to uh, flesh out the vocal arrangement, add some harmonies. So first up, Strings. I just whacked my viola. Whoops. So here I have a violin, which is my main instrument, and a viola, which is a slightly bigger violin. Um, now the viola goes down to a C3 um, instead of to a G3. So that's a full extra fifth lower that this goes. I'm actually planning to get some even lower strings onto this viola, but that's going to be a whole other video. So I think I'm going to start by uh, adding in the lower strings first. So we'll do some stuff on the, the C and the G strings to really root down the string part. Um, and then on top of that, we'll add uh, some violins and we're going to do some really ambient slidey stuff that's going to sound, well, it's going to sound like Bonnie Vare. Okay, violas are in, now it's violin time. All right, now we got some beautiful strings in here. We already talked about vocals in this video when I recorded the leads, but we actually left out something super important when it comes to Bon Iver vocals. Listen to this line from Holocene. You fucked it, friend, it's on its head, it stuck the street. There aren't just two vocals in there. It sounds like a kind of subtle, but nonetheless very existent gang vocal. There's at least like three to five other takes in there singing uh, a mix of harmonies and doubles. This is super important for this style of indie vocal. People love to simplify it and just boil it down to the double tracked panned leads. But the many, many layers of backing vocals underneath those are honestly equally important. Okay, let's isolate the vocals. Here we go. With the tires, we Here's the solid in a hole. And that's pretty much it. I gave my ears a break and then came back to the project the next day and did some mixing and mastering. And yeah, here's the final thing. Make it so we get close to leaving. Feeling. Right away, the wretched 
Oh, 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 oh,